Happy summer, family. I'm taking some vacation time with my family, and I hope that you're finding time to rest as well. So while I'm stepping away for a couple weeks, I'll be sharing some episodes that you loved from the past year. I hope you find them as relevant and helpful to you now as they were when I first shared them. See you soon. Good morning, family. A couple of weeks ago, I may have suggested that following Jesus is easier than we often make it. Today, I'd like to reverse course and suggest the opposite. Following Jesus is difficult. It's hard work. Let's hear what Jesus had to say in John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Hear the word of the Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. These branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way, prove that you are my disciples. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. So we say, thanks be to God. Years ago, some friends asked me if I wanted to go play golf. Now, I'd never played golf before, but it looked easy, so I said yes. You already know where this is going, don't you? When we got out on the golf course, I quickly realized that golf was a lot harder than it looked. Have you ever had a similar experience? It may not necessarily have been with golf, but there are things that at first glance look easy, right? Following Jesus, I think, is one of those things. Well, that is, if you do it right. It might seem like it's effortless. In fact, sometimes that's how we sell it, isn't it? Get your ticket punched, sit back, and let Jesus do all the work, right? But then Jesus comes along and suggests that we must carry crosses for other people. Uh-oh. I didn't want to do any heavy lifting. I just wanted to coast on through. This whole disciple thing might require more effort, more discipline than I thought, right? But the truth is, following Jesus is difficult. It requires effort and work. Jesus told his disciples, remain in me or abide in me. Well, that sounds comforting, doesn't it? These words are alluring and welcoming and warm. We want and need reassurance. We're all looking for security. Who wouldn't love to rest in the everlasting arms of Jesus, just like we used to sing? The words we read this morning have, for generations, been heard as words of comfort. They declare the loving goodness of Jesus, our gentle Savior. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. Remain in me as I remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Good news, right? Those are comforting and encouraging words today. But is that all? So many times, this seems to be the gist of today's lesson, as well as the entire gospel message, for that matter. But there's more to it than that. If we stop with just the comforting words, we miss the whole message. Today's passage also includes the message of pruning, being thrown away and withering, or being thrown into the fire and being burned. That's the part we often fail to hear, and it's quite sobering. The message of Jesus is clear when we read the whole passage closely. Jesus expects something of us. 
He's not necessarily meek and mild, and he doesn't expect us to be. Our call is his call. John also quotes Jesus as saying, Remain in me as I remain in you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. These words are from the same gospel reading, and they even use the same invitation to remain in me. But listen to the difference. Remain in me as I remain in you. How many ways can we say this today? Quid pro quo? No such thing as a free lunch? What goes around comes around? In other sayings of Jesus, we hear, treat others as you want them to treat you. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Love one another as God loves us. However it's phrased, it's a two-part deal. The responsibility goes both ways. There is mutuality, reciprocity, and even exchange. Just as Jesus was not meek and mild, his disciples are not expected to be lazy and ineffective. The image of the vineyard is a common one throughout the Hebrew scriptures, and it was a familiar image for Israel. Maybe it was rooted in the Garden of Eden and the tension between being cast out and longing for return. Vineyard language, rich harvest language, is used throughout the Hebrew scriptures to describe Israel and the promise of God's restored goodness. But here, though, the vineyard language describes our relationship to God through Jesus. It makes clear the expectations of discipleship. This is the time of year when many of us start planting our seeds or visiting the local nursery for plants, as my wife and I did just the other day. We're seeing shoots popping up through the soil. We know that just because we want something to grow, that's no guarantee that it will. We also know that getting our roses to bloom means cutting back the canes, that encouraging the growth of our tomato plants means pinching off the gangly stems, that getting more blooms from your flowers often means cutting back the early blossoms. If something is growing where it doesn't belong, we call it a weed and we pull it out, right? If something is dead or not growing well, we cut it off. If something is too big or too small, we move it, stake it up, tie it back. This is how John's Gospel describes God and the disciples' learning process. You see, gardening is not an armchair activity, and neither is faith. There are choices to be made. It's difficult work. And this passage from John's Gospel uses the image of vine dresser and vineyard to describe the relationship between God and the followers of Jesus. So why do we go through all the trouble of caring and tending? So that we will bear fruit, right? So that we may gain a clearer understanding of our relationship to Jesus, the vine. Jesus invites us to grow and to produce good fruit. And in order to do that, we must remain in God. We must abide. That means to find our home in him, to stake our claim in him. That sounds so easy, doesn't it? But before you answer, the letter of 1 John tells us how hard this will be. We must love our brothers and sisters. Imagine this in the family scenario. What does a parent do when a child doesn't love their brothers and sisters? What would your parents have done if you didn't love your brothers and sisters? Would they have pruned you or something like that? Pruning is the language that John uses in his gospel to describe the vineyard. It could be discipline or it could be maintenance. But we are to grow and to develop and to learn well from our teachers and to live the life to which we are called. And all of that is hard work, isn't it? So how do we do it? We can't do it on our own. Do you remember your baptismal vows? For most of us, when we were baptized, we were asked if we would do the hard work of following Jesus. And our response was, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. There's that give and take construction again, right? And in this Easter season, it's good to remember that for the earliest Christians, baptism was claiming the faith while at the same time being claimed by God. It was the nurturing and tending of the seedling until the tender shoot grew strong. I'm guessing that the preparation for your baptism took months, maybe even years to accomplish. 
There was a lot to learn. There was a lot to do in order to take on an active role in the community of faith. And if we're a part of a community of faith, then the activity of faith is not optional or easy. Abide in me as I abide in you. Doesn't mean to settle down. It means we need to get busy following Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God and Father of all, help us to remain connected to you. Help us to live in you and to abide in you. With your love in our hearts, these branches of your vine blossom and bear a fruitful crop, nourished by the bread of life, refreshed by living water, nurtured by your gracious hand. With your love in our hearts, these branches of your vine can spread the sweet perfume of your blessing to this world and draw others to your feet in grateful praise and worship. Father, you made us out of love and you created us to love. So help us to love others, others who don't look like us, others who don't believe like us, others who don't vote like us, others who don't speak like us, others who don't do anything the way that we do. Help us to love no matter what. And now using the words debts and debtors, let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope these words were helpful to you, and if they were, will you like, review, and share this episode? If you leave a good review, it will help other people to find and benefit from these devotional thoughts. By the way, if you have a need or a prayer request, just leave a message in the comment section, and then be assured that I will be praying for you and for your need. Now this week, your job is to love at least three people and make sure at least one of them doesn't deserve it. Why? Because everyone needs love, and everyone needs to know that God loves them no matter what. Remember, with Jesus, we always, always, always have hope. Now receive these words of benediction today. May the Lord bless you and protect you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and grant you his peace. Amen? Amen.